This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support the show. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm, I'm Dylan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. I got so excited to do that. We're in it and we're already going. So this is the best three color commanders ranked today, Dylan. That's what we're doing today. I'm excited. We're, Me too. We're figuring out the top 10 as we go. We're talking yes. about the best three color individual commanders in CDH, not partners. Well, this doesn't even have to be a top 10. Because okay. basically what we did was we compiled a list of the best three color CEDH commanders that we think Wait, are we already like, did some all of the, the best work? ones. Well, yeah, because there's so many three color commanders. We're not talking about partners today, yeah. but that still leaves you with a litany of different commanders that are viable or out there in cedh that you can play so many big words so many half I'm, of them were used right and half maybe not but i'm still happy you used them me too <laughs> so we're just going to talk about some of what we think are the best commanders that are three colors in cedh and we're going to rank them i love it i summarized everything that, that i just you said it much better that saying, time yeah. i think yeah what I do you agree. got let's 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 start off the list all right so the first one we're going to talk about is kess Cass. Cass. I figured we'd start off with one that we love as a channel. Yeah, an old dear favorite of mine. Although, yeah. unfortunately, I don't know that Cass truly makes the mark anymore. Yeah. It can still do some powerful things. The fact that it comes with consultation, like, I, I want it to be so much better than it is because it works so well with the format. It does graveyard stuff. You're in Grixis, so you already want to be doing that with Underworld Breach and even Yagamoth's Will. It does demonic consultation stuff really well because demonic consultation or Taint's Pact is just a one-card win condition with Cass out as long as you have enough mana that's really good the issue is partners are just fucking better a lot of the time unfortunately not not unfortunately but just it's the reality it's just partners are better it's it's better to have a commander that does nothing and is zero mana than have a commander that because four mana and does anything but that's why i'm specifically excited about this list because we don't have to care about partners exactly we can Sorry, just say yeah. no this is just kess versus the rest of this meta and just what kess brings so oh wait you know we're, you're comparing it to these other commanders like inside of a vacuum here because i have to compare them to the outside scene well yeah honest. but like we're not talking about partner so we're okay, just talking sure, about yeah. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dwell on the part i guess that's true so how much do we want to weigh okay, i'm, I'm gonna, gonna be we should comparing talk about these this. to the cdh meta Great. how we'll good are these to all of the CEDH in the world meta. of cdh yeah Kess can win games you're playing grixis you're playing a lot of good cards you will win games of magic there are probably Grixis commanders specifically and other commanders that will win you more games than Kess. She's a little bit slow. Four mana is tricky. She doesn't work well with Jewel Lotus or Deflecting Swat or uh, Fierce Guardianship. A lot of new recent toys that a lot of commanders are getting. Kess does not work as well with those cards. Um, she can. I've played Kess before with those cards and it's still fine. It's yeah. still great. Like you want Kess out often enough so you're going to want to be playing those cards. She just doesn't work quite as well with the other commanders that can easily get out on turn one and two always. Kess is getting out on turn three normally. Sometimes turn two, that's what you're shooting for. But a lot of times Kess doesn't get till turn three. I feel like a lot of so times slow. you go like land turn two talisman and then that's how you get to your Kess on turn three. Oftentimes, yeah. Yeah, that feels I, like a casual Kess. Really, yeah, exactly. And that's not where you want to be. During turn three in Grixis decks, you want to be starting to turn the corner. You want to be already profiting from your turn two Ristic yeah. study. You want to be winning the game very shortly. Whereas Kess ideally i haven't when i was playing cast i didn't find it was great to win until like turn six or later oh yeah there are ways you can build cast to be turbo whether or not that's the best move i'm not really sure i but. feel like if you're trying to go turbo grixis you should just go uh with Rograk. but if you do want to play a more slow grindy version of grixis i think cast is going to be a lot more helpful in that yeah um and there's not actually a lot of other grixis commanders that we're going to talk about that i think make this upper echelon of three color commanders in cedh uh but between between the two Grixis ones that we're going to talk about, Kess is definitely, you know, at least better than some of the other ones. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure, yes, but compared to the two that we're going to talk about, I would say Kess is probably not as good as... Well, yeah, but I'm not trying Anala. to spoil what the, okay. what the other oh, one is. Sorry, yeah. Because <laughs> the other one's the last one we're going to talk about. <laughs> right. Well, before we move on from Kess, some cards that I want to talk about that I think are good in Kess. Highlight them now. Thought Scour. 
This is, my, this is a personal Gallery. favorite of mine, but I think it's really good with Kess because you get to fill up your graveyard and drawing card is really good. Uh, it's sometimes going to happen where you're going to mess up a top deck tutor from someone else. More often, you're going to fill up your graveyard. Thought Scour is secretly very powerful. Plus, you're an Underworld Breach deck. Helps you fuel that too. Burning Inquiry. This is a card that I really like if you're trying to be disruptive and Kess lets you play with your graveyard more than the average deck. So you get to use some of those cards that you discard if you do. This is the only deck that I would actually recommend Burning Inquiry for because I feel like it's just one of those cards that bites you in the butt too much at the uh, same time. Uh, often times it will but it is great interaction though definitely if you're trying to disrupt someone who you know has already tutored or you're just trying to get someone down on cards who has been drawing too many or something like that burning and crew can be helpful especially because a lot of the wheel payoffs you're going to want to play in cast anyway things like notion thief uh things like uh, orcish or- bowmaster Bow Master. yeah that's like nine clean damage right there definitely i mean i was a big fan of playing narset the planeswalker the three mana one narset you know, part Whatever of Veils is of actually Vail? being seen play in some other like Rog Sci list. Yeah. Like I know this is a while ago now, but it was in Bryant Cook's Rog Sci list yeah. as part of the wheel package. So and it's yeah, definitely I think still it's, good. I think it's still there. Last time I checked his list, it was. I think Narset is a is a powerful option, especially if you're in that Grixis wheel slot house. Slot house? Yeah, the slot house. <laughs> Either way, Kess thrives in a wheel wheel world. She works really well with a lot of wheels. Uh, and I like that about Cass. Definitely, yeah. Um, all right, our next commander is one that maybe we wouldn't have talked about a couple months ago, yeah. but in because of recent things, Tyam Luminous Enigma oh, yeah. has just skyrocketed towards the tops of watch list. Tyam has, if I'm correct, had won a couple of Mox Masters recently, or top four to a couple of Mox Masters. Like it won the last two yeah. as of this recording. Which is playing with Powers tournament series. Yeah, and um, that, that, that's a nuts feats right there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the deck is, is sneakily very good. I think it benefits from having a pilot who knows what the fuck they're doing. And it benefits from having opponents who don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Time does so some like tricky that things. So combination yeah. is a, a recipe for disaster for 75% of the table. It's a great way to win tournaments. It honestly. really is. You and have the to reason... be well-versed in your deck and know that your opponents don't know what the fuck you're doing. That's how you win tournaments. But why Tyam is so busted is because of when you can interact. Like, its ability to win the game is all at instant speed. Well, some of the win conditions are at instant speed. And it's through activated abilities, so you're not casting spells. So it's very similar to Magda just in that say, case. Yeah, it's the same reason why one of the reasons why Magda is so good is being able to win in difficult to interact with ways is very helpful. And it's so easy to be able to get get back the stacks pieces that people have killed. Yep. Wall of Roots is incredible in that deck. I love any deck that Wall of Roots is really good in. Oh, it's 100%. an awesome card. Yeah, so Tyam as I would say is better than Kess. I think that's probably right. I mean the stack package that you get to play kind of like for free, when I say for free is like you can play around them yourself so well. You, and you get access to all the good ones. Dranith Magistrate, Orcish Bowmaster. All of the like, rule of law creatures yeah. because you don't care about casting one spell a turn. And you can be very flexible. Like your time deck can be very different from other time decks, but still have the core package and the good parts. But you can flex it to have the cards that you are good playing with. I, I think the de- deck is very strong. Plus, you also get to play like Devoted Druid and Swift Reconfiguration, which is like one of the best ways to make infinite green mana of all time now, I think. Yeah, I, ag- I agree. It's only three mana combined. You need I mean, summoning sickness is relevant for that no, one. No, because it becomes a vehicle. You're so fucking you right. Can just I always go. forget. You yeah. can go right away. It's basically Demonic Consultation, Thassa's Oracle. That's exactly what it is. You get yeah. to play that same rate in this deck. Pretty good. Better than Kess. Better than Kess. Moving yeah. on. Zur the Enchanter. A lot of people say is a has-been, but it still beats me. (laughs) (laughs) I still lose to this deck all the time. Yeah, Uh, yeah, Zur is definitely an old classic. Doesn't see as much play anymore just because of, I think, like a recency bias and other things. And because of Jewel. We've talked about like the Jewel Lotus scenario on this channel before, too, and on this podcast. But uh, that's also, I think, something that that goes against Zur. This deck played Shimmer Mirror. A long time ago. It still plays Shimmer Mirror, but now it has two more Shimmer Mirrors. It has the new artifact the commander, Urza's... Liberator is Urza's what it's Liberator? called. No, it's called? just called Liberator. Oh, it's just Liberator. Okay. Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter. That's what it is. Okay, and then there's also the new Lord of the Rings card, the two mana blue. You can cast cards for f- instant speed and draw a card. We talked oh, about not yeah. including this one in our set review. We and we're not should've. including it in this episode either. <laughs> <laughs> 
Zerd now has three of its effect to be able to, on the end step, do something to make use of all of the cards that you put into your hand from Necropotence. It's before got, you have to discard. Before that. you have to discard, exactly. Yes. That's very important. You can just win right there in the end step before you go to discard. Zer, all Zerd needs to do is attack. And now that its odds are better than ever at finding one of those instant speed enablers, I think the deck is actually pretty good. Yeah, and it's one of these effects that is only going to get better as we get more three mana enchantments that come into play. The format too. I guess. I mean, it's rare that they're going to be better than Necropotence. To beat Necropotence, and you really but only like, need like get, two or three extras. But if you get beaten down a bunch, and Necropotence is not going to be an answer anymore, like you yeah. need to be able to do something else. What I do love about this deck is it gives you the option to have a really great fun of. If you have an enchantment that no one's going to see coming, you can reliably get it into play without them knowing. That's good. That's uh, that is a way to win a tournament right there. Is to have some. Now, is that thing better than Necropotence? most of the time probably not but sometimes it will be and especially if, when your deck is built around the right, yeah, but, <laughs> but i think that ability is like is is a reason that it can do well in a tournament yeah definitely so where do you have it versus time and Kess? i think it's unfortunately i hate to say this i think it's better than Kess. i it's, think it's better than Kess. it suffers from the same thing that Kess does which is three pips yep uh, and it doesn't benefit off of jewel lotus or deflecting swat obviously can't play deflecting swat or free scratching ship or something like that but Zer can win off itself, and Kess still needs a card to win. Yes. Uh, Zer is a zero-card win condition. Kess is a one-card win condition. So Zer's better. Exactly. But Tyam has won recently more, so time's better for Tyam's now. better for now. than that. But if yeah. I see Zer win a couple tournaments, switch, switching. A flip-flop switcheroo. Do, having Demir in your deck is way better than not having Demir in oh, your well, deck. Oh, so I could so. totally see that happen. I would rather that. play Zer than Tyam at a tournament. I would rather play Zer than Tyam. Because I don't know how the fuck Tyam works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to rely on somebody else. Hey, you know how Tyam works, right? You can give me a heads up. <laughs> That's why I'm glad we had Elliot from the Spike Feeders play it instead yeah. of us. You can just explain to me when <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to interact, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I got right? you. Don't yeah, worry. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Tivit. Is it Seller of Secrets or Teller of Secrets? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I feel like I should be on that's a game a show. That's a good... Yeah, that's a good... Uh, Give it sell, seller. It's got to be Seller. You think it's a Seller of Secrets? For 500, what is Seller of Secrets? It is actually... It is a Seller of Secrets. I'll take 500. Honestly, my guess was going to be the Teller of Secrets, which would have made him a really... <laughs> shitty crime boss leader yeah he just rats everybody out he's just a rat yeah <laughs> creature legendary creature rat all right well whether he is selling the secrets or telling the secrets tivit is recently onto the scene and in many people's eyes probably the new best esper commander better than zur i don't know about that but it's very good. It is doing some things that people can't deal with for some reason. Ward is huge. That ward ability in CDH, that's basically hexproof most of the time. Or like your opponent has to time walk themselves and then that's also really bad. If Swords to Plowshares is four mana, that is a time walk. You're happy for them to do that. Uh, you've already gotten your two treasures from the things so you can just recast Tivit yeah, again. Yeah, right? So like, you don't even care. Flying. Also, on a commander, you don't really need to say that, but like Tivit would just like end the game in three hits on for one player. You can like take out someone. So if the game slows down... Four hits. It is four it's hits. It's four. It's yeah. not three hits because I can do basic math. Well, you can. You just did it. But four is still good. Better than five, which is what Krom is. Four. Four, eight, eight 12, 12, 16, 16 20. It, six. It, Krom is six. Yeah. Either way. Dude, Krom sucks. Why do we play Krom? Krom fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody plays their second spell when he's out. So Tivit wins with time sev. Siv is how you say that Time word. Time Sieve. No, I'm thinking... S-I-E-V-E. -E. I, I agree with you by based on my brain reading it and looking at it, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Time Sieve. It, no, Time Sieve. Uh, like C as in like Spanish for yes, and then Eve, like like the Eve of no. New Year's. Either way, it's a one card win condition with this commander, which yeah. is Tivit, the seller of secrets. Which, by the way, you have to play very particularly in order to actually get that off. I guess so. You just have to cast your commander one time, and then there's five artifacts. Well, yeah, but then like you have to attack in specific ways, because if you kill one of the players, oh. you can't keep making the same amount of artifacts then yeah that's true you can draw a lot of cards and take yeah. a whole bunch of turns before that gets there because you attack everyone yeah. like kind of like separately and by the time that you're at that situation you can like make enough mana yeah. and cast more artifacts and keep going. it's a damage trigger it's a combat damage trigger it's a combat right? damage trigger so yeah, you if have to connect. like someone has birds of paradise you might have to attack someone a couple times right so it's not a guaranteed win but right. it can set them up for the win so again i don't know why we have so many problems with it but i still lose to this deck 
consistently. Worse than Kess. Costs more mana, and its win condition fucking sucks. Honestly, it should be there, but for some reason, I want to put this below Tyam and above Zer. Yeah, I think recency bias is a huge reason for the popularity of Tivit. Honestly, I mean that. Like, six mana for a commander is just... That's just so much fucking mana. There's, like, a lot of yeah. cheaper things that you can be doing much, much earlier. Maybe it's just, like, Displacer Kitten that's really good, and it's not Maybe actually Tivit. Maybe I think what is what is good in Commander is not trying to go for a win first. I think that is what's bad in Commander oftentimes. And I think Tivit allows you to very easily not go for a win yeah. first. I think Tivit guides you to be making good multiplayer decisions just on the nature of what it is does that make sense like no you, that totally does it like it forces you to play the game just wait in a little bit more of like a casual edh kind of setting and you know how like casual decks come into a cedh pod and totally tear it to shreds yeah i feel like that's kind of what it's doing like it's a casual deck bumped up to a nine instead of a 10, but like just gets an advantage piece down early, survives until they can assemble a combo and just doesn't win first, like you're saying. It just lends you to that strategy of trying to strike second, trying to cast the swan song first, and then on your turn, after they've tried, then you try to win. Tivit is good at that game plan. I think that's like the best way to frame it. It's like it's a good late game commander. And I think if you can make it to that late game, late game strategies are very powerful. Yeah, definitely. All right, so where do you want to put Tivit? I don't fucking I know. I want to put, I, I would love to put Tivit under Kess. But Me I, too. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Fuck you, Tivit. Tivit's under Kess. <laughs> All right, the next one is Chulane or Hullen, depending on who you are. This one is good. I think it saw a lot of hype when it first came out, and but I haven't it seen a ton really recently. But it has really fallen out of favor. Yeah. It's really here because I feel like I wanted Bant representation on yeah. here, and Derevi <laughs> has also really fallen, fallen out, of, out favor. of favor. Yeah, I would say that this one is not really where I want to be at this stage of the game. Having to cast five mana. That's bizarre because I want creature combos. Like, I feel like the yeah. creature combo deck is what's going to win. Maybe. Yeah, honestly. Here's my, my thought. It's just, it's too much. It's too much investment. You have to invest five and then untap and then make sure that you have like other things and like a draw off of a creature, how many you're going to get like one or two a turn from that until you get to your combo. Yeah, that's true. Like you just get like a slight bit of value. I just, you I don't know that snowball, it's enough. You do put a like a land into play, don't you yeah. too? So like you can kind of snowball a little bit if you have like enough lands and if you have enough like one drops you can play until you get to your combo so you can draw like maybe three or four cards in a turn uh, but you also lose out on a lot of interaction yeah. because of this too so you I, I don't know i think it's a little bit more precarious for that reason you know what i compare it to animar a lot because it's you a know what? animar was not next on the list but that we should, should be talk next about it on next, the list because for yeah. some reason they're both creature based blue strategies and I think their, their strategies are pretty similar, but I like Animar a lot more because it rewards you for cheating on mana in a creature deck, which I think is more important than the cards in your hand in a creature deck. The cards are good in your hand when they could be anything. But when, when they could be spells and counters, that's when they're good. Right. But they're not good when they're creatures. When you have f four, creatures four are good drops right away in your hand, that's not where you want to be. You want the yes. creatures on the battlefield. I'm not triggering Chulane when they're in my hand. Right. I'm triggering them when they're... On the battlefield exactly. when they're on the stack. And, and Animar rewards you more for getting more things into play. It helps you do that a little bit easier, I think. Plus, Animar, I think, is easier to put wins together through, too. Because you get, like, Doxat Extortionist loops in that deck, too. Yeah. And even though Animar itself isn't, like, an outlet, it basically is. Yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of things a lot easier yeah. to do. Everything and the is now, like, like Pro-White is also huge. That's also true, right? So you can make it infinitely huge, kill, like, the stacks player, and then take it from there yeah i've seen animar mess me up a lot more than i've seen chulane mess me up honestly me too and i think what happens is you don't expect it from animar Maybe. and then all yeah, of a I sudden <laughs> like i expected <laughs> i well, well i feel like i never expect it like the turn that it happens yeah. in animar like i always feel like i'm safe and then i especially because i pass the turn with like a, a negate effect in my hands like right. a, a force of negation and i'm like I can stop anything. And then Animar comes out with this creature combo that I can't interact with at all. And then I 
I'm caught with my pants down. Yeah, definitely. I think Animar tricks you into like, they'll tap out and you'll, in your head, you'll go, okay, Animar, that'll be a problem later. Like, yes. that's what you tell yourself. Later. Like, it's when not it a gets, problem now. When it gets more counters on it, then that'll be a problem. Yeah. And then you untap their turn and they play two things and all of a sudden it's got two counters on it and then they can play another thing and then another thing and then you pass, you go, oh, okay, there's like two or three counters on that, but like, that'll be a problem later. Yeah. And then they untap again and they And then they play like, oh, I have Shrieking Drake and right. now yeah, like, right. it's just nuts. Yeah. Normally, I would say I would rather card draw than mana advantage in the command zone normally i think that's the case but normally i'm playing more spells and like we talked about i think having spells in the hand is better but having creatures in the hand i want the creatures in play doing their thing i want to be proactive with the creatures i don't want to be reactive yeah. with the creatures what also helps animar's case is that it won the 5k that in star city it's games won more in tournaments for sure yeah so like and that's very recent too so it certainly has legs and it's only doing more and i don't think that Tulane is keeping up at the same pace that Animar is. I agree. So where do you, I, I have Tulane under Tivit. Yeah. And then Animar, I feel like we can put up better than Kess. Uh, close with Zer. Zer gets to play more interaction. I like Zer more than Animar. I feel like I like Zer more than Animar. But even it's different though, play styles. It's very different yeah. play styles, and I think they're truly at near the same. Even I just think though, Blue is Blue counter spells is better than blue creatures. Yeah, and even though recent tournaments would say otherwise, I s still think that like having access to demonic consultation and silence is better than yeah having a dark side combo that doesn't win you the game right away. I think the players who would have normally played Zer are playing um other esper decks like tivit when they should just be playing zur so if we had all of those esper pilots playing zur there would be more zurs winning but tivits are but tivits are taking the wins there. yeah exactly <laughs> it's tivit's fault <laughs> such a clear hatred we have for tivit for some reason <laughs> i know right i i just i just feel like it shouldn't be as good as it is yeah, like there's I no reason why it's so good maybe we just I, don't get magic well the other thing too is like it is a completely different strategy than the necropotence decks because like the net you, you have zur and then everyone knows that you're on necropotence so you are going to take a beating until your one four hits play that option isn't there for tivit does tivit play adnaws i feel like tivit doesn't really it can i've seen people play it it's not a necessary part of the strategy your but, cmc yeah. is significantly higher in that deck than it is in like a blue farm or something like that probably so, well because you run like displacer kitten and three fairy which yeah. is not seen like in a lot of other strategies yeah. so um, it's definitely something completely different. So maybe like it just doesn't, I don't know. I just don't think it doesn't get the interaction it deserves. Yeah, I agree. All right, we're going to move past it. Let's talk about Corvold. Corvold's great. You just recently played a bunch of Corvold. I did recently play it. When I say Corvold's great, I mean like it's great in theory. In theory, yeah. And that's all CEDH is. It's a bunch of it's theory. It's a bunch of theory, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In practice, I lost like 10 games in a row with Corvold, and I was like, okay, maybe this deck kind of sucks. Um, it's got some issues. It's got some things that it's really good with. In certain pods, it can absolutely destroy. Uh, you can draw a lot of cards. You can goldfish an insane hand on turn two or three every single time. I have found it very easy to interact with. I was stopped by someone gently blowing me over and I said, oh no, I'll try again next turn, but I am stopped this turn. And then the next turn, I could certainly try to win again. Someone blows me over again and I said, oh no, okay, pass the turn. So th that was my big issue with it is I just like, I couldn't feel safe in trying to win. I could only just like, all I do is try to win, which is a good strategy sometimes, but if I'm in an interactive pod, which I feel like I play in a lot of interactive pods, that shit is just not going to fly. Like, you get interacted by creature interaction, graveyard interaction, stack interaction. Like, there's so much that can go wrong in that deck. And it's also awkward with your treasures, too. Because, like, you want to use them for mana, but you have to crack them for mana before you know the spells that you're going to have to be able to cast. Yes. So it also makes for some awkward play patterns, too, that aren't super intuitive. It's very like it. it's called treasure storm a lot because it is a storm deck when you're going for it You don't know that you can win for sure a lot of combo decks in CDH You don't go for it unless you're like I have the win here I'm gonna try to start doing it Corval, You're yes, and I have five treasures that means five cards win. and five mana if I find a tutor and a reanimation spell a dock side, if I find something I can really fucking win the game But you can just completely whiff and then I have all that mana and it's just gonna float away and do nothing Big Corval that's you have a gonna big get Corvold. chain of vapor. Yeah, whoop de doo like, yeah, it, you you think that like my Corvold will be huge. I can fight through stacks. I didn't find that to be the case. I like great. I 
have a 10-10 Corvold, I'll attack someone once, I'll go to my next turn again, it'll just get removed yeah. or something. Like, it it, it just, can get big, but it can't get big enough to kill the table most of the time. Right, there are yeah. gonna, there are going to be games where it can happen, but I feel like it's it has a huge target. It has a big... It has a big target. A lot and of people know no what Corvold does. Itself, yeah. yeah, so it's not like it has any you know secrets that are going to come at people and surprise them. If Corvold was given access to things that Jund has access to in other formats, like reliable hand disruption, if it had more of that, if it had a, a one-mana card that you could thought seize your three opponents, I think Corvold w- could stand a chance. It's got a lot of the right tools. The big issue for me is it just does not have enough ways to push a win through. That's it. So that being said, Corvold is better than Tulane. Yep. Corvold is where versus Tivit. Probably worse. Probably worse than Tivit. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. Because Tivit should probably be a little higher on this list, but... But we're being mean. But we hate Tivit. <laughs> Official stance list. of play to win. We're Yo, Tivit, Tivit sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Elsha. Elsha. This is our Jeskai representation here. Okay, yeah. Top 16 something pretty recently. Did it? Yeah. That's great. I think it has a lot of tools. I haven't seen it as much recently, but if it's top 16 and that's great stuff, it kind of has card advantage. It, like, pseudo lets you draw yeah. cards. It does the big thing that Corval does. It gets pretty big for the turn. That's kind of nice. Does it have? It gets prowess. It's prowess just for the turn. Yeah, it gets pretty big. I haven't I haven't loved this one as much. Um, no, I mean how, What are your thoughts on it, on it? I like that it basically is a, a two-card win con. Yeah. That's in your command zone, which is nice. Yeah, what's the combo? Sensei's divining top and a mana reducer, basically right exactly then you can draw your whole deck with el show because you keep putting top on top and then casting it for free i like it there are things to like about Elsha. it's not one that i'm gearing up to go towards anytime soon five mana commanders not as much to me for me it's not really what i'm looking for i say that as i'm playing a tracker right now but i'm i'm taking that thing apart seven mana is just i can never fucking cast it i think right now i'm specifically yeah. off of big mana commanders uh, since i've been playing a maybe that's why i hate divot yeah. like how are these people casting these things give me a two mana commander three yeah. mana most they're winning the game off of casting their commander, yeah, too. Yeah, I guess. I want my commander to play a more active role. Yeah. I even have a hard time casting Krom half the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Elsha, what I mean, what else to just say? It plays well into the breach combo lines. Your intuition yeah. lines are good. Has You're a lot of in really good going colors, for it. is really what it has going for colors. it. And you're a better uh, Jewel Lotus deck than some of the other yeah. Jeskai decks, too. I think that... Blue Farm takes the space of a lot of these decks. Yeah, definitely. I think Blue Farm is kind of a mix of Elsha and Kess. Um, So there's kind of no reason to play either of them because... Unless you really like having access to the Sensei's top combo. Right, yeah. But even then, Kess has the Demonic Consultation stuff, which is less cards. Same amount of mana, yeah. You don't need your commander out. We're not going to talk about the partners that much, though. But that is just like... uh, Partners partners are good as fuck. They like that. It's just an issue with any commander that's not a partner is that partners are just... It's better to be... It could be a four-color partner. Right, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But Elsha's good. I like what she brings to the table. She's a powerful commander for sure. Yeah, definitely better than Chulane. Where do you have her versus Corvold? Better than Corvold. I think the ability Ah. to protect herself is really helpful, but I don't think what she's doing is as busted as what Corvold is doing. Yeah, that's true. Corvold... Yeah, Corvold has a higher ceiling for sure. I would rather bring Elsha to a tournament than Corval to a Me tournament. Me too, but I think that's also part of our bias Just where like preference. blue and white in general are Safer. like two colors that we're like on when yeah. it comes to tournament magic. Like yeah. we want to be in those in colors. Each, either ideally both of blue and white. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I would say it's better than Corvold. W- and it's better than Tivit. I don't think so. It's not better than Tivit. I don't think so. Okay, so that's where we cross the line. So Kess can be above Tivit. Yes, because I like Kess, and I'm using my biases to decide these. <laughs> and I don't care enough about Kess to Realistically, argue, so. I do think Kess is better than Elsha. I like four mana more, and Kess, uh, Kess is just um, plays into a, a stronger strategy, I think. Diada. Diada. Diada is next. Diada is a new one. It is a new one. I feel like a lot of people still don't know what this deck does and yeah. i'm one of those people it, it's underworld breach it's mad farm but you're like way more into underworld breach huge uh, into dock side yeah, right there is a line and there's a card a white card you'll have to find it for me because yeah. i can't remember the name but basically what it does is it allows you to flicker a permanent for two mana i believe uh and when you cast with underworld breach you can flicker diada and diada will make more treasures for you to cast the thing and mill more cards for you to recast with underworld breach it's another way to loop through with underworld breach 
I appreciate you looking so intently right now. So I'm going to keep on filling space here while Cameron looks for this card. And when I say filling space, I'm trying to make sure there is no dead air. So I'm just going to say whatever pops into my head. Yeah, you're doing a great job. You said it's a what color card? White, definitely. And do you know the type? Pretty sure sorcery or instant. Oh, it's literally called the flicker. There it is. It's actual flicker. That's actual so funny. Flicker. I used the word. <laughs> Uh, but just another way to combo with Underworld Breach in your Mardu Underworld Breach deck. I've been playing Tim Jeska, which up until now, I thought was like the Mardu Mad Farm Commander pairing. Diada kind of fits the theme a little bit better. I haven't switched yet because I like card advantage and removal in the command zone a lot. And Diada does not have that. Diada, it doesn't do either of those Diada things. just wins, but Diada wins really well. That's true. I mean, I'm looking at a deck list here and it looks really sweet. I mean, you get to play Lutho. You get to play, what is this Leon and Relic Warder doing in here? Are we playing... Animate Dead? Animate Dead loops? Do you have like a Blood Artist effect? There is Animate Dead and Dance of the Dead in here. Is there a Blood Artist? No. No. They're there for Hordling Broodlord. Hording. Hording. Hordling. It's big. Hoarding. Here's the other thing I wanted to say about the deck. You get to play Magda in it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Technically, cool. I feel like I should probably be playing that in Tim Najeska. Um, but I like Diada. I like Diada a lot. Um, Diada is very similar to Korvold. Diada wins quickly. Diada wins very well with Dockside Extortionist. Diada wins very well with a lot of things, um, but she doesn't do much more than that. She's just she just be winning. Uh, so power level, I would kind of rate her close in power to Korvold. I think I'm pretty sure that this Leon and Relic Warder is just interaction. <laughs> Can I see? Yeah, take a look. I don't know why I'm so fucking hung up on this, but do you see anything in that list that would combo with Animate Dead Mayhem in that Devil. thing? Mayhem Devil. But you don't sa you're not sacrificing anything. With the Leona Relic Order and Animate Dead, yeah, you do. What do you sacrifice? Because you the Leona Relic Order exiles the Animate Dead. Oh, when the and animate, then animate Dead is gone, the Leona Relic Order gets sacrificed. Sacrifices it? That took you two fucking seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right, so where are we putting Deata on the list? Similar to Corvold. What's the what's what's it look like around Corvold? Well, it's definitely better than Chulain. Yeah. So we're gonna look at Elsha versus Deata, and I think Deata like more, even better. though Blue yeah. is better. Deata is faster, and I know earlier I said waiting to that late game can be very strong, but I feel like Elsha is a mid game type of deck. That's not where I'm talking about. The mid game is not the powerful place to be. I think the powerful place to be is the late game. Yeah, and the fact that Tivit can do early and late really well is good, but Deata can do early very well better than elsha yes so you think diada should be below tivit because i want to put diada above tivit and above kess i want and below to do that. animar i want animar's that high animar is that high yeah animar should be lower than kess should we make it real or no should we say fuck it are we gonna change everything and make it real and put like tivit where it should be maybe and like which is underneath tyam yeah. Just because the deck performs well. It yeah. doesn't really matter. Whether, whether we agree with the principles of why it's doing well yeah. or not, it doesn't really matter. The deck should suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't, and but that's it why doesn't. it's higher. Yes. All right. So then that means that we're going to put Animar below still, Kess. Uh, still above, above Kess. Kess. Fine. Still above Kess. Fine. Yes. Honestly, Tivit was the only thing out of place. Okay. Because Zer is still better than Animar? Yeah, I, I think, think so. so, too. All right. Let's start Deata over again. Okay. Deata is better than Elsha. Better than Elsha. Now versus Kess. Better I think Kess. right now Deata is better than Kess. Versus Which Animar. Which is weird. Deata does something right away. She mills you and gets you treasures right away. So you have the treasures immediately to do more shit. Guess you have to wait a turn. So Deata is better yeah, than Kess. Yeah, you don't have oh. extra mana. Yeah. Um, what about versus Animar? I think we're getting really close here. Underworld Breach is a stronger strategy, I think. Than Animar? Than, than yeah, what Animar's doing. you're totally doing. right. Yeah. What about Necropotence and getting a free Necropotence from Zura? I think Underworld Breach is stronger, but if we're going off that, Underworld Breach is technically the strongest thing here. And I don't think yeah. what this deck is doing is stronger than Tyam. No, I don't think so. But I think it's probably above Zura and under Tivit. I think so. Which would put it in the number three slot right now, by the way. And then, what is it? Tivit Tyam? Tivit Tyam. Yeah. I think that sounds more correct. That sounds right, yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. <laughs> Living the charade <laughs> yeah, Tivit the, sucks. Yeah, right? It's, <laughs> we can just pretend we're in our own little world. Right? Yeah. It's just, hey, what's that? Yeah, no, that deck sucks. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, let's move on. All right, Rocco. Rocco. Finally, another good deck. Another good real deck. A real deck. I'm I think, a real deck. I think Rocco's great. I mean, having the two box to your entire deck, it's exactly what a green deck wants. It's to me immediately better than Animar because oh yeah, this is definitely. like this is what you want in a Naya deck. The access access to anything to every and also single creature. Having a three mana commander, you need to be able to birthing pot start a three, yeah. and having this body left over is perfect body to birthing pot into your Kiki line. It's a perfect way to start a numerous bunch of combos. Find the one combo piece that you don't need. Yep. It's a one card wing con if you have food chain then. Yep. Because it can just go find Squee on its own. Right. Yeah. It's it's it it does a lot of things that the other commanders on this list do, but it does them much more consistently because it can do anything. Yeah, exactly. You're in a pretty good color combination. Pretty good. You're if you're not gonna be in Demir, this is Naya is closer to where I want to be. Yeah. Outside of uh Thassa's Oracle Underworld Breach combo, the Kiki Jiki combo, yes. birthing pods, somewhere area, in like that's where this I want to be. Blue list Dawn Waker kind of yeah. area. Yeah, that thing I would say that's how do you feel about uh, collect your roof in this deck. I hate it now. You take it out? It's, I haven't taken it out yet. You gonna? But I'm gonna. I haven't looked at my Rocco list in a little bit, but the last couple times I've played it, I've been unhappy with it. What's Manglehorn do? Destroys an artifact on ETB and, and then artifacts come into play tap. So it still messes if, up. But it messes up you. It's not just your opponent. Correct. Yeah. So it's still, right? I'm trying to think if there's something that you can replace the oof that still does a similar ish thing. But doesn't fuck no, you up. No, actually, it does say oh. artifacts to your opponent's control. Under. Maybe that's the swap then. Maybe that's Maybe what it is. Maybe you still have yeah. the toolbox option to fuck with artifacts a little bit, not as yeah. much as oof, but still protect yourself. Yeah. Maybe. I anyway, think I'm going to look into that more. Yeah. Rocco is pretty good. Rocco is pretty good. So I'm going to put Rocco above Zer. Yes. Which means that we're in like Diata and Tivit territory here. I like it more than Diata. The flexibility, that's what wins tournaments, I yeah, think. Yeah, I definitely speed. agree. I don't like that your interaction isn't great in a lot of Rocco decks. That's true. And if people know the deck, they know what you're doing. Exactly. They know when to be on the lookout. They know when to hold opposition agent up. You yeah. get shut off by some pretty loud things in some pretty terrible ways. Yeah, and I think it's easier to interact with that than Tivit, which kind of makes me want to put Rocco underneath Tivit. Yeah, I think so, unfortunately. As much as I would rather play Rocco, I agree. This, I agree. You're going to be spending like six mana to be or fair, more I'd on I'd rather Rocco. play most of these decks than Tivit right now. You're going to be spending like six mana on Tivit a lot of the time anyway, sometimes five, but that's, that's pricey for a commander. Minx, we're going to stay in the Naya realm Minx is next I put this I think it's Minsk I'm going to say it however I want <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Hulk it's Hulk yeah, instead yeah. of birthing pie you're doing Hulk stuff yeah it's very comparable to the other one we just talked about to Rocco because you're doing a lot of the same things you're in the same colors but your win lines are slightly different you can win a little bit I don't know. You spend more cards on your win. There's, I would say, birthing. Uh, I would say, protein Hulk. There's like more cards to your combo a lot of the time. But that might not even be true compared to birthing there, pod. There's this a lot. Birthing, birthing pod, pod needs three in your deck plus birthing pod. Yeah, so that's four total. And then Hulk also needs, needs Hulk, and, and then three other cards. And three other cards too. So it's about the same. It's about the same. Birthing pod costs four mana. And then two more Hulk activate. Costs Hulk seven costs mana. seven mana. It's worse. Yeah, that's so much there's worse. No, and there's no way to cheat it into there's play no way in that to cheat deck. It into yeah, play. no way. Man, I really wish there was a way to cheat it into play. Hmm. Got to be worse. Okay. Yeah, I can't believe no one thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the deck can win very efficiently. It's got, I would say, more ways to win than Rocco, but I like Rocco's flexibility more. Totally agree. Uh, but I also think that Minx is worse than Dayata. I think it's in the same ballpark of what Diada's doing, which is just win the game really good, and I like Diada at that better. Yeah, which is kind of why I think it's worse than Diada. Yeah, I think so you, I agree with you. We got a, I was gonna say a Naya sandwich, but I feel like a Naya sandwich would mean that the Naya is in the, the middle. Inside. It's a Mardu sandwich, but there's nothing Naya sandwiching bread. the Mardu. I don't Naya understand. Bread. I don't understand that reference that people make. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to finally talk about our last one here, which I think is going to shoot up t towards the top of the list. Give it to me. It's Anala. Yeah, Anala. I firmly believe that Anala is only held back by its difficulty to play. Totally not, agree. Not only its inability to memorize its 17-step combo line, that part is hard, but the deck can pivot from a lot of different points and take a lot of different shortcuts. And if you're not aware of those, you miss a lot of points on Anala. And uh, I, I think... It, the deck is just so good. Zero card win. You're already in Grixis. Um, it does it does something that I shouldn't say zero card. It's a one card. You need the spell seeker. That's yeah. not true. But um, it just it does that really well. You don't have to cast your commander. It shows how 
broken eminence can truly be um i like anala a lot i totally agree and the only reason why i've never really went to it is because of its complexity yeah but at the same time though the combo makes a lot of sense once you do kind of figure out what's going on and what you're assembling it's just like pretty obvious how you can just piece together a ton of mana after yeah, a while maybe cam will be able to put the uh, screenshot of the the win the steps here but it's simple it's Get two spell seekers in play, get some rituals, eventually make infinite attackers. Yeah, that's simple. the line. That's simple. what you're doing. Yeah. Super simple. Yeah. Yeah. Anala, but Anala doesn't see a lot of play. And that we do have to kind of weigh that in our decision of like, is it actually good? Am I right in thinking that? Or is the deck just like too easy to stop? A mental misstep stops it pretty hard. I mean, like, does it is it too easy to interact with? Is you it like you swords the plowshare, the spell seeker, and now they're fucked. Now they're fucked. Like it's kind of similar to Protein Hulk in that they have a lot of pieces that don't do anything besides win the game and in today's day in magic and cd it's like you just don't need to be playing bad cards really like you just that is kind of a thing to strike against anala but its ability to win is pretty close to unmatched i definitely agree yeah i think if there is a deck that you're just going to play a bunch of bad cards to make a good deck good i think anala is definitely the way to go with that i agree How, where, where are we ranking this one well i think it's it's this versus tyam for the number one spot i think it's worse than time. You think it's worse than time? Is time the best three color? I think it's. I think it's like probably worse than Tivit, honestly. You think it's worse than Tivit? Yeah, I think it's. Is it just because it's not winning tournaments? I think. Yeah, I think we have to weigh that in a little bit. Well, then, is it worse than Rocco and Diada then? No, because I... it's not being seen in tournaments at all. <laughs> and those decks do. Um, no, I think it's a gray area for sure. I think it's better than those decks though. Um, but I do think. Huh, this is tough. This is I tricky. Would, I would put it below time and above Tivit. Because even if it doesn't have the tournament pedigree, it's still an incredibly powerful deck. And you don't need to cast your five mana commander to win the game with your one card combo, which is all things that are more efficient than Tivit's win conditions. You're in better colors than Tivit, technically. You're less flexible, though. True. But who gives a shit about Ward 3 when you don't even need to cast your commander? That's super helpful. That is very important. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I am comfortable saying that Anala is uh, above Tivit. Yeah. Also speed. Speed. Very fast. Definitely has it. What's our list? All right. So I'm just going to go from bottom to top. I think there's like 12 cards on this list. Let's, however many let's there go are. From, it's the top 10 though. It's the... So eliminate two. We are them. doing the top 10. What's the 12th one? All honorable, right. So honorable, honorable mentions, mentions yeah. are Chulane and Corvold. Eliminate. Our number 10 is Elsha. Elsha. Great. <laughs> Normally I say something. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Sensei's dividing top. Good win. Five mana commander. Not happy. Kess is our number nine. One card win condition. Too slow. Too slow. Our number eight is Animar. Doesn't draw your cards. Are you just saying a negative thing about I'm all saying of them? The first thing that comes to my mind. <laughs> just the like first a word thought. association <laughs> test. <laughs> okay. Our number seven best three color commander is Zur the Enchanter. Should be way better. <laughs> Minx is our number six. Should be way worse. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Just kills something. <laughs> Our number five is Diada. Diada. Uh should be better should be better <laughs> yeah is the underworld breach that i just i wish it was better i wish it's plus did anything it's just not popular enough quite yet I, that's it, the only reason why once diada becomes more popular and people are more okay with playing a planeswalker in the command zone it's gonna get there maybe yeah you might be right it's just a tough sell versus timna an established already amazing command that's the big issue like how can it be better than timna it also it gets negated easier whatever yeah. Well, the more people know what's going on with it, the worse it's going to get to. That's also true. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's in a fine spot. Our number four is Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer. The Naya deck. One of the main reasons I stopped playing Blood Pot, unfortunately. Number three is Tivet, either the seller or teller of secrets. Deck sucks, I don't think but we landed wins. on an answer for that. <laughs> deck sucks, but it wins, so yes. it's good. Our number two is Anala. Should be the number one, but it's and, too hard to play. And our number one is Tyam Luminous Enigma. Probably a little bit of recency bias, but this commander and deck is really good. I really like Tyam. I love what it's doing. Even though it's not in blue, it interacts really well with the meta. Is this the first top 10 that like we're not 100% sold on it being 100% accurate? Honestly, I give us kind of like a B minus on this one. Just It's hard to compare because like we should be comparing them to partners and against other things. And then I think the list would make more sense. I think some people probably put Tivit as number one over Tyam. I think if we were comparing these to partners, then Tyam and Rocco would be like the best two. 
because they're the only yeah. things that are doing something that's different that like partners a, a partner pairing can't do. Tivit with time Civ is the only thing like that. I yeah. that having the one card win con. Oh, there. Tivit would be up there too. Yeah, but yeah. Play blue farm instead. I feel like that would be my argument against Tivit. Like Zur, play play a five mana and a three. Like mana here's commander. my like comparison to Zur is like Zur is four mana, Tivit's six mana. Yeah. Tivit, you have to cast Tivit and then go onto wow. your and then your turn and then find a way to find the time sieve. Whereas Zur, you just have to cast the Zur pass and then go around and then go around as same as before passing right? the but then turn. you don't need any more cards you already have the win it's right there in your command zone so like and it's an attack trigger instead of a damage trigger i think zur is better than tivit i think just recency oh bias all right so now that now that everyone stopped watching do you want to do like the real top 10 where we put like our actual thoughts in here no let's save that for like, patreon or something all right we'll do maybe that'll be the only the only cams episode <laughs> there for, you go for august the real best three color commanders thank you so much for watching or listening if you like to support us directly you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Storm Again, Cool Bean Man, Luke Cook, Young Max, AJ Alwosabi, Demon of Rosgrees, Kawaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby Jeebus. If you want to pick up any merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Big shout out to Dragon Shield. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Make sure you use our affiliate link down in our description to let them know we sent you there. Check us out on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content. Thank you for watching or listening. See you next time. Lutri's dad. Let's try to do it at the same time. Okay. Three, two. Lutri's dad. Lutri's dad. Stashes. <laughs> Mitchell Shepard. Justin. Justin Man Solo. Nicola Marikovic. Stephen Shalikti. Big TP15. That green guy. Pedro. Jacob Depp. Michael, Michael Ballou. Jan Wildfang, Wildfang. Thomas Bueno. Swampy McGee. McGee David, David Nelson. Jormags. Welcome to a Play to Win podcast. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs>